My name is James Hananan. I'm a consultant radiologist at NUH in Singapore. And today we're going to talk about how do we ensure MRI safety for patients and staff. First of all, let's have a look at some MRI accident examples. We've got a big range here. We've got wheelchairs that have been pulled into the MRI scanner, even got entire trolleys that have been pulled in. Potentially extremely dangerous situation for both staff and patients. There have been many different MRI safety initiatives, really starting with the ACR in 2002, and that was in response uh, to that unfortunate tragedy. And then there was a recent update in 2019, but that's really guidelines only. The question is, does it go far enough? There's no mandated reporting of safety incidences required in the United States, but we know that safety incidents continue to occur and each institution needs to play a key role. Why aren't these rules followed and why are MRI accidents still occurring? Well, I'd like to touch base on this article that was published in European Audiology this year and its magnetic resonance imaging incidents are severely underreported. This was a finding in a multi-center interview survey and we'll go through this paper now. So this study was to develop a procedure to investigate the occurrence, character and causes of MRI imaging incidences. And they used a semi-structured questionnaire uh, that talked about safety zones, examination complexity and staff MR knowledge. And it really focused on both formally and informal reports of incidences during 2014 to 2019. And here we see in this picture, uh, again, a machine, a monitor pulled into the MRI scanner at the author's institution. Only 38% of the incidences were reported formally at the institutions. And there was a clear negative correlation observed between the number of annual incidences and the knowledge of the staff involved. Quotes like burns are to be expected in MR and not even knowing the name of the incident reporting system suggested an inadequate safety culture. And there was a desire among staff for improved MRI safety education. They wanted more accessible education and more focused involvement of the operations management. So how can we mitigate safety risks? One key component is an MRI safety timeout, and this should really be performed with the hospital staff who enters the MRI scan room each time you're going to do a scan. And we can see that form here, just to make sure that all staff have emptied their pockets, make sure that the staff members do not have any device implanted, and to make sure that they do not move any equipment without checking with the radiographer first. Other things that I do at my present institution and at other institutions in Singapore is dedicated MRI training. We do this for all hospital staff who enter the MRI scan room. This will be nurses, radiographers, doctors. So one hour training session, it's typical, should be held uh, once a month, ideally, and it also includes screening of implants in staff members. We can see the importance of screening the staff this was a case in Sweden. Someone was actually wearing a weight vest, which helps you burn calories during the day, and they were actually pulled into the scanner and received major injuries. Other ways of mitigating safety risks would include quizzes at these learning workshops. So accidents hurt, safety doesn't. You'll see that flash up throughout my slides. So let's start on the first question. This is asked to all people who will go into the MRI scanner. So the MRI magnet is only switched on when the scan starts. Well, it's clearly false, the magnet is always on, but you need to make sure that everyone knows this. And secondly, in medical emergency situations, the following should be done, and this is absolutely key. You need to evacuate the patient from the MRI scan room first before resuscitation is performed. This slide is actually taken from one of our MRI learning workshops. We really stress to the staff that they need to attend the training for both their own safety as well as the safety of the patients. 
They need to be an active participant in the timeout that's done before each scan. They need to be patient with the instructions given by the MRI radiographer in charge. And they really need to comply with the requirements for MRI safety. Remember, safety is like a lock, but you are the key. We also have an example of a poster that we have in our department that's posted around. This really ensures that staff members check their pockets, put loose items in lockers. And make sure that safety is their priority and their responsibility. Let's now talk about the MRI safety workflow. So this slide is taken in conjunction with the UK Magnetic Resonance Imaging Equipment and Clinical Use and the ACR guidance. So we can see overall that MRI is split into different zones for safety. We have zone three, which is around the control room and zone four, which is actually in the MRI scan room itself. Now let's go through this in a bit more detail. So signage is key to outline where the MRI safety zoning areas are. Key signage is the magnet is always on. We can see different examples of that here, even when the control panel is dark and the scanner is off. The key thing is only staff trained in MRI are allowed to access the MRI area. Going into a bit more detail, MRI zone one is the general public area outside the MRI environment and no safety screening or training is required for this area. MRI zone 2. This is an MRI pre-screening area so all your patient screening should be done in this area before the MRI scan. Another key thing to note, and I've said this earlier in the talk, that in an emergency situation resuscitation will be carried out only in this area. So you move the patient from zone 4 through to zone two. Zone three is the scanning control room and this is just outside the MRI suite. In this area you really should only have properly screened patients, fully trained MRI staff or only necessary people. And here is MRI zone four this is where the magnet is located and only fully trained MRI staff have access to this area. All non-MRI personnel can only enter under direct supervision. This is a potential risk and this is where you can get keys and other projectiles, especially if you don't empty your pockets. The MRI gauss line is another key thing that is drawn on the floor and these gauss lines indicate different magnetic field strengths. Key thing to note is the closer you get to the magnet, the higher the Gauss line is. So five Gauss and below are considered as a safe level that's outside this red line. You need to ensure the correct distance from the scanner for safe operation of MR equipment as well. And this is important. For all staff who go in, when you dock the equipment under the supervision of the radiographer, you shouldn't move it again at all unless you got permission from that radiographer. So the inside the red zone is a potential projectile zone and this is where the equipment zone should be outside that red line. So let's move on and cover MRI equipment and safety labels. We're going to talk about the different labels shown below. So for MRI equipment only equipment with the MRI safe or conditional labels can be brought into the MRI suite. However, even if the equipment is potentially safe, they must not cross the MRI Gauss line. Otherwise, you're going to get a situation, as we see here in this picture, where that has been dragged in and that poses a massive risk to both patients and staff members. Here is where you can find the MRI conditional label. We can see this one here on this monitoring device. Keep outside 10,000 Gauss or the 1.0 T magnetic field line. So there will be warnings and equipment. If there isn't a warning, then you've got to be extra safe. Check with the MRI radiographer. Let's move on to MRI safety screening. This is absolutely key for keeping patients safe. It's what you can't see that can do harm. 
So along with the signage that we have here, you've always got to keep this in the back of your mind. Each time, do a full screen along with the timeout as well to protect both patients and staff. So what do we do when we're doing MRI safety screening? Well, we've got to keep in the back of our mind that potentially serious complications from safety issues with MRI can occur. And this is with an interaction of the magnetic field with implantable devices, such as pacemakers, and ferromagnetic objects which could heat up or even become projectiles. So each patient was required to fill up an MRI safety screening form. On this form, you need to list down the make and model of certain implants and these will need to be checked against relevant databases, including MRI safety websites, to confirm their safety. This will be done by the radiographer, but the whole team needs to play a role. So whether you're a clinician on the ward, nursing staff, if you can fill up these forms with details that are important, we can ensure a much safer environment. MRI safety and implant safety labelling is another key thing, whether the device is MRI safe, MR conditional or MR unsafe. And there are many different MRI safety resources. Here are a few that are available on the web. We have the Institute for Magnetic Resonance Safety, Education and Research, the MORD database, that's for reported MRI accidents, MedSun, again for MRI accidents. Then we have the MRISafety.com website, I'm sure you're mostly familiar with if you're working in MR regularly and this is a comprehensive site that contains safety guidelines and a list of all the implants and devices um, that you would need to know about in routine clinical use. Uh, other sites can include Dr. Emmanuel Canals, MRMD and MRSO, MR Safety Training Courses. This is part of formal accreditation in the United States of America. Let's talk a little bit more about implantable devices and potential contraindications you need to be aware about. Orthopedic implants always come up and along with that you need to know when the implant was actually inserted. Potentially some aneurysm clips that are used for clipping off uh, brain aneurysms. Ocular and otologic implants, uh, coils, pacemakers and specific models I need to stress are MR conditional. Then you've got prosthetic heart valves, you've got other coronary stents, and skin staples is one key thing. After surgery, this can lead to heating and other issues. Implantable drug infusion devices, these are becoming more common, you need to be aware about it. And VP shunts. These can be programmable versus non-programmable. So programmable, really, in a simplified way, need to be treated like pacemakers. You need to check them pre and post procedure. You need to have a workflow available for these. Now pacemakers. As we know, a pacemaker is a small device that's usually placed in the chest uh, to help control abnormal heart rhythms. So it uses electrical pulses and could potentially be affected by the magnetic field. Other potential devices include an automated implantable cardioverter defibrillator, IECD. Now only some models of pacemakers are deemed conditional to be scanned in an MRI scanner. And you really need to have a hospital specific workflow to safely scan these patients. Also for screening purposes, you can look at chest x-rays and prior scans, and that screening checklist must pick up these pacemakers. Surgical implants we mentioned before, this includes orthopedic implants that can be plates, screws, or even rods, neurosurgical implants, including the shunts, the programmable VP shunts, dental implants. Now MR safety depends on the type of implant, the make, but also, as I said before, how long since it has been inserted. So if an implant is made of non-ferromagnetic metal, the patient can be scanned almost immediately after implantation, but you have to check on a case-by-case -case basis. However, if the scan region is over the site of the implant, then artifact obscuring the region of interest must also be considered. Always think about your scan quality. Other potential issues are that some implants are not MR conditional at 3T and should be scanned at 1.5 Tesla. The implant's MR conditional labelling determines the field strength at which it can be used safely. So always keep this in the back of your mind. A 
Okay, so moving on to a hot topic, detection of implants. This can be a major challenge. So how do we detect them? Well, they could be self-reported by patients during the MRI screening process. You would hope that the referring physician would ask the correct questions, but sometimes they do, sometimes the patient forgets, but just on the day itself, they then offer the information. These can be occasionally overlooked and not discovered, as I said, until the finding screening. So a recent case that I heard about was an MRI request in the pacemaker was actually inserted in the interim between the clinic and the scan. So it's just spotted in time. So you have to have a rigorous workflow. What are potential solutions to this problem for implant detection? One key field at the moment, hot topic in the literature, is AI and natural language processing of the clinical record, radiology reports and images. Can we pick up potential implants that can be flagged for manual review by radiographers or staff before a patient comes down? That's one potential area of research. Another potential area is a barcode could be given for each device inserted to a patient. And when you scan that barcode, you get the relevant MRI safety information. These are all potential future innovations. Let's not be disheartened though, we have had many MRI safety victories, one of which is nephrogenic systemic fibrosis. This was first reported in 2006. We had a heightened focus and now it's virtually disappeared. So that's a big win. Increasing awareness of safety when scanning patients with implanted devices and other metallic items in their body. We've really improved on this and scanning implanted cardiac devices especially, we now do this routinely without adverse events. So what does the future hold for MRI safety? One key question is, should we have mandated reporting of safety instances? This would at least provide a more accurate view of the frequency of adverse events and near misses, so we can discuss them, look at the action points and move forward. Should there be credentialing? This is actually done by the American Board of Magnetic Resonance Safety. We can see that here on this slide, credentialed professionals who oversee MR safety. This includes a magnetic resonance medical director, a safety officer, and a safety expert. So they have a 10 year certification with a formal examination. This is one thing we could potentially consider out in here in Asia. Big topics of discussion. Hope you enjoyed the talk. Just remember that safety is not expensive, but accidents are. Thank you very much. And to finish off, here are the references for your review.